All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back for some more Dungeon Defenders 2 today, checking out the last little things involving the Huntress, our lovely trap-related heroic compatriot who wields a bow and lots of poisons and explosions and stuff. And um, you might notice, before we jump in, something very aesthetically different about my character, both with the floating turd next to me and uh, my head. But the one thing we're definitely going to cover today, before we do anything else, is this new, our final little sort of trap or tower. It's like a flame tower, kind of. Um, it's like a cute little uh, chicken bird bomb. Look at it. Isn't that neat? Or something, I think. But uh, yeah, so this thing, it floats up in the air. And it drops, uh, well, napalm explosives that light everything on fire. Um, it does pretty good, actually. Um, it looks kind of doofy. I'll, I'll definitely give it credit for the, the humor in it. But I would have thought we'd get something with some slowing mechanics or something. You know, because we already have a fire trap, you know, the, the explosive fire trap. So I'd have figured it would have been something a little different, but, um, you know, I don't mind it. I don't love it, but I don't mind it. And so, um, the other thing is I finally managed to log in enough to unlock some companion pets. Like the Perlin, which is like a, a witch's black cat, which I currently have equipped. We've also got, um, the Serpentiny, which is just a floating dragon baby or something. And then what I have been using, uh, is one of these... Infants, uh, an infant imp that is wearing a diaper and drooling everywhere with a spoon and they poop everywhere and on everything. And, uh, I, I guess they're cute. Not really my, uh, cup of tea. I kind of wanted the other thing that hatches out of these evil, um, creeper eggs that this thing came out of. But it, it's okay. It's an okay little pet. Um, and it doesn't look too bad from behind with its cute little wings. Um, I kind of was hoping for the demon with the candle on its head, though. Um, and last but not least, I took a look at what the, um, early access accessory is for the Huntress. Normally, you just have, like, this normal, uh, typical headband on her head with her little elf ears and really tight tights and everything. But the, the headpiece you get for being, um, an early access founder is you get this little, like, uh, forest helm that's made out of leaves. And it kind of looks more elfish than just a headband. And then, because I had some of this blue in-game currency that they gave to early access people, um, I got the Green Goblin skin, which is the, uh, Goblin Infiltrator Huntress. Look at me, I am Goblin. I am friend of Goblin kind. I not be human or elf. It's okay, we eat people now, but only the tofu kind, because I have allergies. I had it does it, it too much gluten for the goblin. But no, it's cool, and it's got like some bombs on her butt and everything. It's very Green Goblin from Spider-Man. Um, I definitely dig it. So that's the, that's what we're rocking today. Now, one of the weird bugs that kind of happens that maybe you can see is. Um, our bow hasn't changed, it's just for some reason it got, like, bent around back on itself so that, um, it looks all weird. See? You can see it right here. Cadbury Cream's weird bow, all janked up. And the only way to really fix that is to go into your inventory and re-equip it to our weird, like, uh, kind of octagonal, square, uh, sharp-edged bow. It's a serpent bow, I, I don't know. Some of these, uh... These are a little laid out, a little weird. So, um, we have the Little Horn Valley available here to play in. I'm not... I'm not gonna go with the Little Horn Valley. It's got, like, five spawn points, if I remember correctly, and that's just... That's not gonna be the best for us, truth be told. So we're gonna go to the Forgotten Ruins, I think. And have, do stuff. Okay, so, Forgotten Ruins. It's actually a pretty cool map. All in all, um, you got all these secondary objectives to worry about, like, um, this West Ancient Idol. It's basically like you've got two independent crystals to worry about in here, and each one of them protects from this ancient portal, 
keeping it sealed away for 10,000 years. Or maybe it's the temple behind it. There's this really cool temple that uh, I, I'm actually just now becoming aware of. But they, these like weird kind of mogling creatures, mogwise, their magic keeps these portals from, from unleashing demon spawn. And then there's like these secondary like gate control crystals that you also have to defend. Now the difference here is your secondary helper um, in the map is actually this automated crystal defense laser. The, the downside to this laser being very powerful is it's shared over all of these different locations. So it can be transported up here, down below me, and it can only be in one place at a time. So I actually just like leaving it over here. This seems like the best a location for it. And um, it can just shoot stuff there. Now we've only got three spawn points. We got one here, one over there, and one downstairs. Which is what this hop platform is here for, to get down here. Um, pretty, pretty simple to defend. Really, it is. Um, that's a weird, uh, magical thing up there. No idea what the deal is with that, but it's got evil, like, monster skull fountains on either side, so... I assume it's important. You know, whatever. So, what am I gonna do with this? I mean, there's no overlap for defenses here. So, I'm just gonna start placing things like... You know what, let's just start out the playthrough with the new tower. Um, you've got this thing. Well, it's not really a tower, it's a trap. And this... it does a damage over time fire explosion, so... To my thinking... I haven't had a lot of time to play with these yet. But, to my thinking... Damage over time works best when it's it's the first thing applied to a target and then it has plenty of time to do its job. And then they'll go into... We'll move this back a little bit. They'll go into a flame tower. Then they'll go into a knock-up tower, which will then spritz their face with just a little bit of poison. I think that sounds pretty reasonable. Don't you? Yeah. Or better, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna come find you and... Touch you Bob Ross style with paintbrushes or something, I don't know. Um, and I think that's pretty much what we'll do throughout the entire map. My character kind of looks red for some reason. That's weird. It must just be the lighting mixed with uh, our, our bag of tricks. Let's see, so first... Cat Exploder... Or not the Cat Exploder, the Chicken Bomb. Uh, that's not an ISIS reference to FBI who might be listening to these recordings later, it's just the reality. Uh, I don't want that, I wanted, uh, the knock-up. To grab people so that the, uh, the poison tower can do its job for us. And then pretty much anything that's left will just be shore up by whatever we end up having to use after that. Like, maybe a couple extra explosions. Um, it's just a little tricky because... If they get past the ex the traps, then, like, the the towers, the arrow towers, are gonna go down. The poison arrow towers are the only thing that can really be directly attacked in the Huntress's kit. Which is nice, but it also, I mean, I prefer having a wall. My biggest hang-up in this game so far has been the lack of usable and sustainable walls. So, I mean, that's not a huge deal, it's just the name of the game, really. And, uh, I'm not gonna have an easy time watching down here, so I'm actually gonna cram a couple more traps downstairs, so that this thing, I don't have to watch it as much. It's kinda awkward to jump down there when you're dealing with these two upper floors. So hopefully this pans out. Let's get started, shall we? Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Now there's a new monster in here that we didn't quite have to deal with before. And there's, like, these crystal critters, and they, like, uh, they make it so that your towers, like, don't do their jobs, or they, you know, they get disabled, or something really annoying. We got some spear throwers that aren't getting nailed. That's just, that's actually really annoying. Um, you know, this is, this is, like, the first round. It's where you see all the holes that may or may not be in your defenses so far. Now, I'm- I'm jumping over these- these things a lot. So I'm hoping that I don't- oh. 
Whoa, hold on, campers. That's rude. Stop touching my stuff. Those are expensive buttholes. Um... Whoa, you guys getting through? Who's... Who's touching what? Alright, I think we're okay. Uh, that's not an upgrade. We'll leave that alone. Oh no, even more are coming. Another 56 of the, of the critters. I may need to move these poison towers back just a touch. But I do want that egg. That's like my favorite kind of egg. I'm hoping it gives me good things. Now oh, this is gonna be overkill. That's fine. Um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move the poison towers back on these other two locations. But that's... it's not a big deal, really. I'm also gonna probably put a couple more of these damage over time chicken towers into the mix. And, uh, that crystal, that crystal extra helper, not really doing its job, which is disappointing. I figured this thing would be more powerful, but I guess not. So, that was our first wave. Not terrible. Um, these towers do a pretty decent job all on their own. We're gonna upgrade you, we're gonna upgrade you. Um... Not sure if I really want these knock-up towers, but I'm definitely selling this thing. Um... Same for back here. I feel like this tower is gonna be just a little bit more useful. If we move it just a little bit further back. That way, shit has to, like, come through here. And then it can just shoot them as they approach the crystal. And instead of just, like, nuking everybody, it'll just pick up whatever stragglers are left. I th actually no, well, we will put one back here still. I changed my mind. I'm allowed to do that sometimes. I mean, really, I'm just talking out loud and spitballing. What sort of course of action would be the best? Not all of them are going to be up to snuff, truthfully. So we're going to have to have quite a bit of overlap with these poison arrow turrets. And I don't want them... I want them, like, not in the direct line of fire. You probably think to yourself, wouldn't it be easier if things were attacking them? I, th I find it interrupts them and makes them far less effective at doing their jobs. So, we won't quite do that. We got some new gloves. Um, you know what, you're, you're in an okay place down here. Let's make sure these are repaired and upgraded. Um, what should I put down here? I think in another poison tower, a little further back. And this one will overlap that direction, because I think, like, right around here was where those annoying buttholes were standing and shooting at my stuff. Those spear-chucking orc goblin-looking things. I'm also not super sure what the story is in this new Dungeon Defenders. Um... The previous story was that, like, the apprentices were fucking around one day, and they unleashed an ancient evil that their their predecessors, their parental figures, or maybe their masters or trainers or whatever, it might be like Shaolin monk-style um, parentage going on. Uh, they knocked over some important old shit, and a bunch of crystals got activated, and all the evil in the world was just like, Well, look who's been fucking with things, huh? And then we unleashed uh, terror and destruction of a thousand years. And that's not working out so great for us. Looks like we have a few spillovers into this other zone, but that'll be fine. We'll just keep track of the leftovers, keep an eye on the old mini-map. Things are looking better down, down below. Uh, I definitely have had a much harder time, and maybe that's intentional with these classes to be more difficult. Of, um, keeping shit under control with these traps and no walls. I think I've stipulated that before, but it's really true. Oh, and now we're starting to get flying units, so I'll have to pay attention to that next wave when we build up stuff. Hopefully some of these are wyverns, wyverns, why not verns? Vern, 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 verns. Um, that would be kind of cool. What, West Sealstone? This is the, this is the West Sealstone. Alright, that's fine. Um, the nice thing that's kind of good about how these... Whoa, hi. What are you guys doing over here? That's not where you belong. Not even close. Um... The nice thing is that, like, 
A lot of monsters do direct attacks on towers and stuff. So the really good thing about having a bunch of traps is that they don't really attack most of them. Most of them just kind of get ignored or left alone, and that's really nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade you. Um, you're now level... What? I know that. I made him level three. That was a little overkill, but that's fine. Um, let's upgrade you. Let's upgrade... Nope, not enough to upgrade you. But um, we definitely want to make sure that the bottom is the best, most well taken care of, so I don't have to worry about it. But that's fine. Um, I'm actually kind of double down on how I'm trying not to worry about two things. I'm trying not to worry about over there, but I'm not doing it... Whoa, 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 I almost killed myself. Um, I basically don't want to be down here, but there's no way to stick that automated turret over here, which is kind of shitty. So, let's find out where those wyverns are coming from. Looks like from over there. This is another thing, um, these towers, not, not really the best for taking care of wyverns. Or flyers in general. They, they just kind of come and they do a little bit of poison damage, but they don't stay within the range of the tower long enough to really get all of their damage in that they possibly could from a target that's basically just gonna sit next to, like, uh, the crystals and just wail on them for, like, an hour. So, I guess that's whatever. But, every class has gotta have its downside, because at the end of the day, uh, Dungeon Defenders 2 is really supposed to be kind of like a collaborative or a team-driven tower defense game that you happen to be able to play um, on your own without people. And I think that's perfectly fine and reasonable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a nice, not a lot of talking required social game in the mix. Uh, let's repair you. Looks like everything's good to go. Um, and by social mix, I mean like... You can kind of just throw down these, uh, help banners. And then that tells people like, hey, I need something over here, or I need help, or... Holy tits, uh, the world is on fire. Everyone grab the nearest hiney and start fondling it, because you are about to bite the big one. You know, all of these pings are pretty... pretty good and pretty useful in my book. I think we're ready, let's do the stuff with the things. Pretty soon, we should start seeing that specialty crystalline monster, but I... I have no idea. I do like the spread on these exploding chickeny towers, though. They do a really good job. Uh, they spray everywhere. It basically is like you are spritzing them in the face with napalm. So that's really effective, actually. Um... Things are going well so far. Let's check off the, uh, the side panel. Got an ogre. These orky ogre things are really annoying. They have a lot of health, which makes them troublesome to deal with. And here come the why not verns. How rude of them. Maybe I can get my... I have a... I have a quest to kill wyverns. I need to kill like 15 of them. But the thing with the daily quests in Dungeon Defenders 2 is that, like... They, they don't always count if you let your minions do the work for you. Which... I don't know if that's cool or if that's annoying, but it is what it is. Uh oh, we got a- we got- oh, never mind. It looked like some orcish friend was going to come and visit us, but we've uh, narrowly avoided that. No crystal douchebags yet. I like that. Um, yeah. No, that's cool. What else we got? Bottoms looking okay. Oh, uh, we got a- uh, we got a nasty up here, getting shot by this other poison tower. So, uh, the- the traps do pretty well, it's just like, there's one or two stragglers here or there that kind of sneak through the cracks, like I'm some sort of social-based government program that's supposed to help everybody, but for some reason doesn't. Um, oh, we got some more eggs, got a new Gato egg and a dragon egg. I got a creeper egg earlier, which is the one I really want, because it gives me all what I find to be the cool creatures that you can, uh, add to your collection. So we'll upgrade these poison towers. And I don't think we really need too many more towers right now. Not that we can really do too much more building. For the most part, it's just keeping up what we've got, and I think we could build, like, one or two 
more explosive traps at most before we're kind of out of build space. Uh, let's see. This is level two. Let's pop this and this and this. Make sure all of these are repaired. I don't want to do too, too much upgrading right now. Just because, um, I tend to get tunnel visioned on one specific area of a map. And I forget to add shit to other areas. And then stuff just kind of falls through the cracks, which isn't very good. Um, there gets to be big gaps in your defenses. And it becomes readily apparent very, very quickly. So that's already tier three. The, wow, that one really took a beating. Let's upgrade you. Um, repair, repair, repair. Uh, can't upgrade anymore. Yeah, I think we're- I think we're doing okay. I think good things are happening for us here in Nimbus Reach. Is this Nimbus Reach? Am I- am I crazy? I- I can't remember how to bring up the scoreboard to see. Um, full health, full health, full health. Yep, we're good, let's do the thing. Yeah, no, I- I'm enjoying this game so far. Very relaxing. Some of the some of the levels can be pretty difficult sometimes, either solo or with people. Just trying to mix and match your defenses can be really tough. Um, this game does a pretty good job of being relevantly and reasonably challenging. So I just got to deal with these wyverns, the wyverns. Um, I'm sure it's like. Probably Portuguese for flying, um, murder, scorpion, monkey thing. Uh, yeah, our defenses are looking strong. Maybe it's not until the last wave that we start getting those annoying-ass crystalline douchebags. So we got three- oh, it's probably the flyers that were sneaking over here. That's kind of rude. But that's fine. Those are easy to deal with. Uh, that's the whole reason I put this spare poison tower back here. But it's not hitting all of them very well. Good news! Um, this chick is almost like a third of her shit is completely ranged. Like, primarily. Whereas, stuff like the mage, a lot of his stuff, you gotta kinda be in their face to utilize. Like the tornado, or like the, the mana crash explosion. It's cool, don't get me wrong, I rather enjoy it, but... It just feels a little lacking in the range department for a guy who's primarily, um, magical. And butt-touchy. So, what's going on downstairs, kids? Oh, creepy ogre touching my shit. How rude. But we got plenty of mana now, or we- oh, here's what I want, another creeper egg. We got plenty of all of this stuff now, so that our defenses should be pretty much A-OK -okay for this last wave. We're on wave five. This should be where we start seeing the specialty D-bags that we weren't seeing before. Which is gonna mean that we want to upgrade anything that's still, like, level one. I don't really need to put you to tier four, that seems excessive. Um, put you to tier three, repair you, actually put you to tier three too. The one that we seem to be having the most trouble on is actually up here. Everything else seems to be pretty okay. Uh, what is this? Yeah, I'll upgrade you to tier three, repair you, repair you, and you, and I'll build another explosion back here, and upgrade you, and repair you. If you need it, I guess, first and foremost. Yeah, no, I'm- I'm happy. We've used up all of our defense points. Nothing's really going through too, too badly. And it looks like the new specialty mobs are only going to end up spawning down here. So that's- it's actually pretty useful. In the grand scheme of things. I uh, just gotta make sure all of this stuff is nice and upgraded, and... So what- is... I don't know how to tell what the next thing is that's coming out, but it's coming out down here. So we'll have to pay attention to the, uh, the basement approach. So, um, I was talking about the story before. It seems like maybe this is probably just a continuation of the previous story, where... Now that we've kind of dealt with all the shit trying to touch the ancient crystals, it's pretty much just stuff in general is going through and trying to attack the land. You know, all that rude crap. 
which I think is manageable. I mean, it, they're just goblins. They're not exactly mathematicians with a gun. So, I mean, what's the worst that they could do, really, besides, like, murder and pillage the entire countryside and maybe some fondling without permission and this gate lock is getting torn apart? Shit. Oh, good thing I'm here to touch the things. Why is this over here? Well, I guess that's helpful. It's better than, better than a poke in the eye, as my father would say, to have a little extra defense over here. So, that guy's nuked. Let's nuke these guys with a phoenix arrow. Yeah, it's working out just fine. Um, I can't tell what the specialty mob was. It might have actually... Oh, shit. Well, never mind. I got my answer now. What are you doing? Oh, that's rude. Stop it. Stop it, you. And this... These ogres are... Having a hell of a time. Um, we can afford to let those gate locks go now. Because we're not really using them. But at the same time, um, it would be nice to get a little bit better points and not have to worry about Bojangles, the janky skeleton. So let's volley. These, these bad boys have, like, no health left. Um, it's just Big Poopenmeyer the third being rude. Why you gotta do this, skeleton pits? Ow! Shit, that hurt. That, you super rude. Alright. So anyway, like, this is like the only thing you ever have to worry about taking control of yourself. So hey. Not the worst thing in the world. We have our cool new goblin costume. We have our cool new, um, pet. We have, uh, all of our towers. They've proven to be pretty effective. Um, I like the damage over time, if utilized correctly, however, the game has given me another green. Why you gotta do me this way, Dungeon Defenders 2? I thought we were friends. Come on, turn into a better chest, turn into a better chest. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Give me that blue goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh. Honka chonk. Chicka 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 chonk. Alright, what do we get, what do we get, what do we get? Ooh, a new headpiece. Uh, it's a, it's a marked improvement. It's not an improvement because I'm primarily a tower defense guy, but it, it'll do. It'll do real fine. I got some upgraded boots, and what is this? An okay helm. Not helm, uh, bow. Ooh, upgraded chest piece. More eggs. I don't know what these books are for. It's just like, they must be story pieces that you can pick up around the game. Kind of Dark Souls style, um, as Dark Souls is one of the few games that I'm familiar with that really, um, puts, like, their story in little tidbits on their items and stuff. So that's not a terrible way to go about doing it. So anyway, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Thanks for joining me for the Hunter Showcase, guys. Um, this probably won't be the last video that you see with the Huntress in it. Um, she's a fun class to play. She's, uh, an all-around great gal. And, um, I'll definitely play her some more in the future, down the road, when I showcase some of the cooler later stuff that you get. And some of the cooler later, um, maps. And we actually already replaced that helm I just won with a shitty green helm. Lissai. But, uh, no, like, we'll check out all sorts of stuff. Um, we gotta check out, like, the monk and the warrior next for some showcase spotlightification. So until then, um, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one, guys, and toodaloo!